products will describe your asset inventory accounts. To accomplish that, an account balance detail needs to be assigned to the account categories used to purchase your products. The typical account categories that represent the crop products are first of all prepaid vendor purchase, which represents products you've purchased but they haven't been delivered yet. Once they've been delivered, they'll be transferred to a raw material account. So fertilizer raw material are the fertilizer delivered products and the chemical raw material are the chemical delivered products and seed and plant delivered products. Once the products have been delivered and it's time to apply them to the fields, they're gonna be transferred from a raw material account to a work in process account. So you have your fertilizer work in process, chemical work in process, seed and plant work in process that all represent applied products on the field. The purpose of using the prepaid vendor purchase is to give a clean way of determining what products you've purchased that have not been delivered from the ones that have actually been delivered. If you decide to use the prepaid vendor purchase, you'll need to make an adjustment for 2018 tax reporting. The, currently, the prepaid vendor purchase account category is not assigned as a taxable account on the 1040 Schedule F user-defined report. There is a modification that can be done on that. So if you are going to be purchasing products for 2019, but in the tax reporting of 2018, you'll want to see the video of prepaid vendor purchase tax reporting for 2018, and it'll step you through that modification. If that doesn't apply, then modifications to the 1040 Schedule F are gonna be done for you in the 2019 spring release of CenterPoint Accounting for Agriculture. Let's now go on to our account categories and see how to assign that balance detail. We're gonna to go to Setup, Accounts, and account categories. And we're gonna start with the account category of fertilizer raw material. So I'm gonna edit this account category and go to the balance detail tab. And on the left are all the different items that I could store a balance detail for the uh, balance sheet category. I'm going to highlight product click my right arrow or I could double click on product and move it to the right. This indicates that all accounts under the fertilizer raw material account category are now going to be maintained by product. When I assign product to an account under fertilizer raw material, it's going to create a sub ledger balance for every product that I have under that account. It gives you this warning up at the top that if you assign a balance detail um, and you have details for that prior to assigning this, you need to repost on the accounts. If you haven't used product yet, you can just ignore that um, message and you don't need to repost. If you have put in some transactions already with product, then you wanna do that reposting. And I'll show you how to repost when we go to accounts a little bit later. I'm gonna click save. So you'll wanna repeat that same step for your chemical raw material and your seed and plant raw material. Now let's do the one for the fertilizer WIP. Fertilizer on your WIP accounts uh, categories, they're gonna be additionally tracked by production detail. So we're gonna again go to detail, go to balance detail, and we are going to move over product, but additionally, we're gonna move over production center detail. Once the raw material accounts are transferred to the work in process account, at the work in process, we now know what field it got applied to, and we're gonna maintain that detail on the balance of the accounts under the work in process account categories. So we're gonna move production center detail over to the right also. The order of which you use over on the right is up to you. Um, if you want the balances maintained first by production center detail and then see all the products underneath it, then you want production center detail first and then product. If you want to list the products first and see all the fields that it went to under one product, so you would have a subtotal for the product, 
um, then you enlist it product first and then the production center detail. Whichever way makes most sense to you is fine. Um, the end result of getting the information later will be the same either way. So we're going to leave um, this at production center detail and product underneath it and I'm going to go ahead and click save. You'll want to repeat that step for your chemical work in process and your seed plant work in process. Now we're going to do the uh, prepaid vendor purchase category. So I'm going to go here and to the balance detail and in this case prepaid vendor purchase is already being maintained by name. When you use that account or an account in that category, it's keeping track of the different vendors that you did the purchase to and making a subledger balance for those different vendors. Additionally, now we want the product over there. So this will be um, uh, typically our first purchase, uh, bringing that product in, and we want that product to be maintained on the vendor purchase. I would suggest leaving name first in this case and then product underneath it. So under each vendor, you'll have the list of products that were purchased from that particular vendor. And then uh, when that product is delivered, again, um, that uh, will do a general journal to move it out of the prepaid account to a raw material. And we're going to go ahead and click Save on that. And that completes the details that we need to change on the account categories. Now we're going to go to Accounts. So we're going to go to Setup, Accounts, and Accounts. I'm going to expand Assets. And we're going to start with our fertilizer raw material. I'll explain a couple of these. And notice that the accounts that I have under my chemical raw material and my fertilizer raw material now are just general accounts. They're not our individual ingredients like you may have had before. These are just general because the product is going to maintain the detail of the different ingredients that you're actually purchasing. But at the account level, we just need general. We will want an account for the different ways that you are tracking unit of measure. Um, so I have a dry fertilizer that I am maintaining um, by the pound. Okay, it's by the pounds. And if I um, go back to my list and I go to liquid fertilizer, it's getting maintained by the ton. And of my nutrient, I have one here, a nutrient raw material that I'm uh, wanting by quart. So the different products that I'm purchasing, I'll use my different account based on what unit of measure that I'm using there. If we edit one of these uh, uh, accounts, there is a new field on the Detail tab. The Detail tab is also identifying your um, uh, associated accounts with this particular account category. We're identifying the WIP account that goes with our raw material and the cost account that we're using for this particular raw material. And in addition, we've added product type. So the product types are the standardized list of different product types that were accumulated here. And in this case, it's for crop fertilizer. What this will do is when I use this account of dry fertilizer raw material and I select the product that I'm going to be purchasing, it's going to filter my products for only those that are in the type of crop fertilizer. I'll show you real quick. I'm going to bring up a payment tab and use my dry fertilizer raw material. And now if I do my lookup on product, I'm only seeing my product categories that are in the product type of crop fertilizer. I have a fertilizer and I have a fertilizer blend. I'm not seeing my seed products. I'm not seeing my chemical products. So it's just a way of helping you in selecting your different products. I'm going to clear that. And that same uh, uh, Fix will be done on all of your different accounts that you have uh, that you're using under these categories for crop products. Uh, one other thing, if you have a lot of uh, accounts that you now need to inactivate because you're not going to be using them anymore, we're going to go under seed plants and I still have some accounts that I'm no longer going to use. I'm just going to be using corn seed whip and soybean seed whip. Um, I have created a 
separate account for each one of the different crops, but that's really not necessary either. If they're being maintained by the same unit of measure, which is bags in this case, then you might not need that either. But I did create that, but I don't need these other specific ingredients. So I'm holding down my control key, marking the ingredients I no longer need, right click, go to activate, deactivate, and simply click deactivate all. That's going to deactivate those accounts from my list. And if it, there's balances in there, it's going to tell you, you shouldn't inactivate it if there's still balances in there. Um, and then you would want to take care of that first, but then you can go ahead and inactivate those. That would just clean up the list. Your filter should also say active equal yes and then your list is going to show just your active accounts. And when you're doing transactions, the default is always to just show you active accounts also. Those are all the changes that need to be made to your accounts. And we are going to be ready to start our first transaction of uh, purchasing prepaid products.